Does this fix menopause? I will talk about this and Do you know what the safest way to take estrogen is for hormonal health? Sudden and surprising insights and discoveries during my HRT journey. Now there is a warning on the insert that comes in the packages of estrogen. And this is where I choose to spend my money. I invest in my own health. Women are concerned about taking estrogen for the risk of breast cancer, and yet every day they slather on toxic chemicals. So let us get started. Do you know what the safest way to take estrogen is for hormonal health? This is important to know, and let's look at it. You can either use an estrogen patch or an estrogen gel. These gels are clear and can be applied directly to the skin, absorbing into the bloodstream. The skin acts as a reservoir, slowly releasing the hormone. So back to the question about what the safest way is. It's through the skin. However, absorption can vary greatly amongst women due to factors like skin temperature, skin texture, and the state of the skin flora, also known as the skin microbiome. Now we have available to us natural hormones as science and medicine has improved. They are called body identical hormones, which basically means the hormones are exactly the same as the hormones that we were producing when we were younger. We're just replacing like with like. For example, like we do with thyroxine for hypothyroidism. If needed, we can do this with all three of the sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. As I mentioned, the safest way of having estrogen is through the skin, either a patch or a gel. For my hormone balance, I use two pumps of estrogel. I initially started with one and a half pumps and noticed after six months, it was not enough. My doctor monitors my blood every six months. So I was canceled to increase the dose by half a pump. I also take progesterone and testosterone, which I will speak about in my next videos. I do have to pay for my hormones privately and same with my consultation with my hormone doctor. And this is where I choose to spend my money. I invest in my own health and trade off other things like Starbucks, Tim Hortons, and eating out at restaurants. I do think this should be made available to all women free of charge, but we're not there yet. And there is a lack of adequate training on the biological importance of these body identical hormones. And hopefully with more awareness, we will see changes in this important and much needed part of women's health. The estrogel I use contains 17 beta estradiol, which is the natural estrogen that we produce. If you look at it, I know it's hard on the camera, but you can see it's just a clear gel. And so it just gets rubbed in. Now it's licensed to be rubbed in on the outsides of the arms or the insides of your thighs. We're actually using the skin as a vehicle. So it can be used in different areas of the skin. I would not worry too much about making sure it's exactly on the outside of the arms. Some people find it rubs in better in different areas of the body. We're all different. And this means that getting the estrogel through the skin really varies from person to person. It's not just the absorption, it's also the metabolism of the estrogen once it goes in as well. So just rub it in very smoothly so it gets absorbed into the skin. When it goes under the skin, the skin just acts as a reservoir and then it slowly becomes released into the bloodstream. Now our skin is a barrier. It isn't meant to have chemicals put through it. And this means that getting the estrogen through the skin really varies. And the studies have all shown there's quite a large variation between different women and how the estrogen gets absorbed. It's also not just the absorption, it's the metabolism of the estrogen once it goes in as well. And it's also the uptake into the tissues. Also, it depends on the heat of our skin. When our skin is warmer, it often absorbs easier because the blood vessels are on the surface of the skin. And when we're colder, it can be more difficult to absorb. And a lot of people actually find that their skin becomes quite dry actually when they're in menopause. And then it can be harder to absorb as well. It's important to look at how it's absorbed. 
this assessment can be done with blood tests and by monitoring your symptoms. When a level is low, it usually means that the person isn't absorbing the product well. And so the dose may have to be changed or the preparation because that actual preparation isn't working very well for that woman. Did you know another thing that may prevent the proper absorption is the flora on your skin? Yes, the state of the skin's flora, also known as the skin microbiome, can potentially affect the absorption rate of topical medications, including topical estrogen, like transdermal estradiol. The skin microbiome consists of various microorganisms, including bacteria, fungi, and viruses that reside on the skin's surface. Factors related to the skin flora that can influence drug absorption include Number one, the skin integrity and barrier function. A healthy skin microbiome contributes to the integrity and proper functioning of the skin barrier. Disruption in the skin microbiome can lead to skin conditions like dermatitis, which may alter the skin's permeability and potentially affect drug absorption. Number two, pH levels. The skin micro microbiome plays a role in maintaining the pH balance of the skin. Changes in pH can affect the skin's ability to absorb topical medications. Number three, enzymatic activity. Microorganisms on the skin can produce enzymes that might interact with and metabolize drugs applied to the skin, potentially altering their effectiveness. Number four, skin hydration. The skin microbiome is involved in regulating skin hydration. The level of skin hydration can influence the absorption of topical products. Maintaining a healthy skin microbiome is important for the effective absorption of topical medications. Strategies like gentle skin care, using only chemical-free moisturizers, a balanced diet, and avoiding excessive sun exposure can help maintain a healthy skin barrier and microbiome. Also, it's important to be aware if the skin is a vehicle to deliver hormones to your bloodstream, do you even know what's even in your skincare products? And what the heck have you been putting on your skin all these years? Women are said to have absorbed two pounds of parabens in their lifetime from their skincare products. Parabens are associated with breast cancer. Women are concerned about taking estrogen for the risk of breast cancer, and yet every day they slather on toxic chemicals in their beauty and skincare regime that disrupt the skin flora and are detrimental to their health. There's so much misinformation out there that needs to be clarified. Women are being grossly misled by the corporate beauty industry. It's really sad to see. That's another topic, back to estrogen. Now, there are estrogen patches as well. They come in different sizes according to the dose. They're just like a clear plaster, so it's basically transparent on any of the skin and skin should be clean and dry when applying estrogen patches. These patches usually go on the skin below the waist so they can be put on the lower back, the bottom, they can be put on the thighs. And again, studies have shown there's a huge variation even in the same person, depending on where it's put on. Again, it's important to monitor as people might need a higher dose just because they're not absorbing fully through the skin. Now there is a warning on the insert that comes in the packages of estrogen patches and gels and even vaginal estrogen as well. And I'm not going to read it to you, but if you look at it, it'll tell you that there's a risk of blood clot. There's a risk of blood pressure and there's a risk of heart disease and there's a risk of breast cancer. And actually, there isn't any evidence for that. I will delve deeper into the long-term use and safety of these in another video. To recap, on topical estrogens, there are different types, there are different doses, individualization of dose is really super important, about a third of women who are on HRT find it's not working for them. In these cases, it's a matter of changing to a different preparation. 
not necessarily the dose being increased because a different preparation might mean it's absorbed better and they don't need the dose increasing. Some women do need the dose increasing and that's absolutely fine as well because it's not the dose that's given externally, it's about the amount that's absorbed internally. And as long as people are being monitored for their symptom improvement, are monitoring their levels and making sure there's no other underlying reason for their symptoms, then it's absolutely fine. Be aware that there are chemicals in the delivery agents. And lastly, an important point to remember is when women still have their womb, it's important to take progesterone. I'll talk more about progesterone in my next video. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. Please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Cheers to your health and hormone balance.